here. And well, we're, we're live. It didn't have to hide. It. Okay. All right. So we're good. We're on. Okay. So I don't have to touch this. Nope. Good. There's yours. The only thing you're worrying about is camera yeah, angles or not. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Hello. All right. Let's see. Ernestine, would you give a head count and text it to me, please? Thank you. I appreciate that. We are going to be in Revelation chapter 6. There are only 17 verses, but we should be able to fill our time because there's the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There are the saints under the throne. Um, there's lots of good things to talk about here. A uh, quarter of humanity being wiped out. So there's plenty uh, of, of things that I'm Expecting some dialogue from Bob and Jerry and a few others. Well, do you bring your question, Bob? Let's have a moment of prayer. All right. Let's go to the Lord. Father, I thank you so much for all my brothers and sisters who are here in the house of God and who are watching online and participating with us as we dig into your word. Those who are watching live and those who will watch our archives videos later. I pray that you'll bless this, Lord, that you'll help us to understand and draw closer to you. And thank you in Jesus' precious and holy name and all God's people said. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Too many technologies going on at one time. That's why I'm blessed to have Robbie on the keyboards over there. Yep. And uh, teaching him some new stuff tonight. So I'm um, very proud of his work for the king. All right. Glasses. You have a handout. Let's go through your handout first. And then we will um, begin with verse 1 of Revelation chapter 6. So the notes that I'm giving you, you will notice that at the very end, it's footnote in John MacArthur, the MacArthur Study Bible. These are some great, um, great footnotes. Um, you'll notice that there is a chart that says Daniel's 70th week. Daniel's 70th week, and that's half of it. Um, I wanted to, and you see my um, circle where I circled the seals. You have the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, souls under the altar, and then physical changes within the earth. Those are um, found in the chapter that we're in, chapter 6. The next page over is the seven seals. This is seals as in you break a seal and open a package, not seals that go... Oh! Something that is sealed, a scroll with seven seals. Each seal that is broken reveals something new. Uh, and so we're going to look at that. Um, if you will look at the next page, that is a Revelation timeline. Um, this is from the Bible chronologically. Um, Tim LaHaye is one of the editors of it. And I wanted you to have this uh, as kind of a reminder of how this all flows. Um, and then there is one last handout. Many of you already have this, have seen it before. This is a black uh, rendition of the Book of Revelation timeline by Charles Larkin. And I have a whole book full of his uh, charts and renditions. Uh, we are. If you look at the top, you see where it says Judgment Seat of Christ, and then follow that down. 
the next, where it says the seven seals, and it's that quarter size, um, and that's where it says white horse, red horse, black horse, pale horse. That's where we are currently um, in our studies. Okay. So feel free to read these notes as we go, or if you want to read them at home, that's fine. I hole punched it so that you can put it in a binder if you like. And I would love for us to end um, our study in Revelation with you having a very full and complete binder <coughs> full of notes and charts and pictures and stuff. All right. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with a voice of thunder, come. So the Lamb is Jesus, and he's the only one who can pop these seals open. And when he does, he commands these four horsemen of the apocalypse to come forth. Now, you'll read in your notes, and, and I, I concur since obviously John O'Brien knows a lot more about it than I do, but these are not four actual horses and four actual riders. They are representative of a force, a power uh, that is coming upon the earth. So let's, let's look at verse 2. And I looked and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. So, some people, when they see a white horse and a crown, they immediately think that this is Jesus. But it is not Jesus. This is the Antichrist. Um, we, we learn that um, as we go, um, Jesus is the one popping the seals, and he's telling these forces to come forth, and he's not telling himself to come forth. He's telling his forces to come forth. Riding a white horse is a demonstration of power and military might. Uh, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, what was he riding on? A donkey, because a donkey symbolized peace and was not threatening. Um, a horse, however, uh, you know, generals and victors and, and those who are conquering and they're riding a white horse. Um, and he who sat upon it had a bow. Now, if you have a bow, that is a military uh, instrument, a weapon, but there's something missing. He doesn't have any arrows. He has a bow. He's a military man. He's, he's uh, going forth to conquer and conquering, and he has a crown. Crown is given to him. So if a crown is given to him um, by this, we can assume that the crown is given to him by those whom he is conquering and has conquered. Now, we know a lot about the Antichrist, and we'll be learning more and talking more about him, um, but he is a military genius. And the world will love him. And he'll have lots of answers to the world's problems. And, and so he's going to be received and welcomed. Um, in, a, in a little bit, in a few verses, we're going to switch over to Zechariah 14. So if you want to find that, put your finger there, put a marker there. We're going to go there in a few minutes once we get over um, a few of these courses. But the first horse is a white horse, and it is the Antichrist who is riding on the white horse. He comes conquering and to conquer. He is given a crown, so therefore we know he has governing authority. He is eventually going to be welcomed, and, and, and he's going to manipulate his way into being a world, the world leader. He will rule the entire earth. Let's go. Any questions? Any comments? Now we can um, we can take time out to probably maybe next week we should do it and look at all of the different verses in the Bible that talk about the Antichrist. 
that we can study him. We'll step out of our chapter study and do that. What do you think? Yeah. You want to do that? Okay. All right, so we'll do that. Um, verse 3. And when he broke the second seal, he being Christ, broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. And another, a red horse, went out, and to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from the earth, and that men should slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. Um, what does red represent? Blood, war. Um, you know, Mars is called the red planet, and Mars, I believe, was the god of war. Um, and so we readily see, since he's carrying a sword, and he's taking peace from the earth, and men are going to kill one another, um, he is bringing war onto the planet Earth in a big way. Now, <clears throat> what is the worst possible concept of war that we can think of? Nuclear age. Nuclear war, Robbie says nuclear age. You know, the, one, the worst concept of war is when you're in war? Tell me. When you, they hang the enemy up on the side of the road and let him hang there for two or three weeks. Yeah, that's horrible. And that's what the whole concept was designed crucifixion in Jesus' time. Right. Uh, however, I don't think they're going to have a lot of time for that. Let me take you right now to Zechariah chapter 12. Well, let me have the question. 14. Hang on, Bob. Zechariah chapter 14. Look at 14 verse 12. And tell me what this uh, sounds like to you. Now this will be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the peoples who have gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet. And their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongue will rot in their mouth. While they're standing, in an instant, the flesh will rot and their eyes will dry. The King James says dissolve. Which dissolve. Dissolve. Have you, have you, all right, you've heard of atomic bomb. Have you heard of a neutron bomb? Neutron bombs were developed so that it would not ruin the landscape and all of the things man creates, all it does is melt humans. So, that's in scripture. Um, I'm going to quickly read over a few verses from chapter 14 of Zechariah. Behold, the day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you will be divided among you. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured, and houses plundered, the women ravished, and half of the city exiled. But the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. And when he fights on a day of battle, and in, the, in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem, on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in its middle from east to west and by a very large valley so that half of the mountain will move toward the north and the other half towards the south. Um, it, it continues in verse 7, For it will be a unique day, which is known to the Lord neither day nor night, but it will come about that at evening time there will be Light. Um, verse 8, and it will come about in that day that living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea and the other half toward the western sea. It will be in summer as well as in winter. Um, and verse 9, and the Lord will be king over all the earth. Now, that has not taken place yet. It is a day yet to come. It is talking, that's talking about everything that takes place at the Battle of Armageddon and then moving on into the Millennial Kingdom. 
However, we're at the, we're at the beginning part of the tribulation in Revelation chapter 6. So we have the Antichrist appear, and we have war coming upon the planet. When you have <clears throat> war, and what's coming next is famine, and after that, death and plague, you can count on a lot of people dying. Now, in a typical war, world war, how many millions of people died? Typical war, World War I, World War II, a million, six million Jews in World War II, add to that another two million in warfare, not quite a billion. And at that time, that was huge. But how many, well, well I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. <clears throat> so we have open warfare in verses 3 and 4. The Antichrist is consolidating his power, and he is gaining control over all of the nations. And then we have verse 5. And when he broke the third seal, when Jesus breaks the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come! And I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. Black horse represents plague and famine. And I heard, as it were, a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, but do not harm the oil or the wine. Um, it's a day's wages for a loaf of bread. How much does a loaf of bread cost right now? A lot. Two bucks, buck fifty. In this time period, it will be so rare, it will cost you a day's wages. Hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars. But I like this where it says, do not harm the oil or the wine. The rich people, they're going to still have their oil, and they're still going to have their wine. There's in, a, in the world today, the divide between the rich and the poor is getting bigger and bigger divide. There are fewer and fewer middle class people. Verse 7. And when he broke the, the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come! And I looked, and behold, an ashen horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. And authority was given to him to kill 